Okay, so... Um, right, thinking like a, um, a chess grandmaster. So, basically, before I kind of get into that bit, I just want to talk about this. So this is a concept from... What's his name? Patrick Bet David. Um, and all it is, is you've got a little section here. So imagine this is on each box, um, where 10%, so this is the bottom 10% of this little section here, okay? And then what you've got is you've got the top. That's a terrible drawing. You've got the top 10%. Um, and then obviously you've got 80% in the middle. So this is the average. Okay, so... For example, if you're earning uh, X amount of money, so... Doosh, doosh, doosh. Oops. Uh, why do I keep doing that? Okay, so you're earning X amount of money here. Now, within your kind of friends group, let's say, or people that you know, you're either in one of these three things. You're either in the bottom 10%, which means you're earning, um, so let's say you have 100 people. You're in with those 10 people, and everyone else above you, 90% of people in that 100 people, are earning more than you, okay? And this is all you see. Now, if you have a look at this person here, this is what happens to a lot of people, okay? There's gonna be 10 people in here. Now, these 10 people, if they were to stay in this box, they're happy. You know, they're doing better than Jimmy, they're doing better than Sarah or whatever, because they're making more money than 90% of the people that they know. And they don't want to go into this next box because where are they going to be? They're not going to be in the 10% at the top. They're going to be in the 10% of the bottom, right? So if you imagine that all of these have little 10% at the top and at the bottom. Now this person here they have two choices that they can make. They can stay in this little section here, feel good about themselves, and make more than whoever they know, right? Make more than the 90%. Or they can push themselves into this section here and go into the next category where they're earning more. And this group earns more, okay? But they're going to be in that bottom 10%. And what happens when you surround yourself with people that are better than you? You rise to their level. So now this person isn't in the bottom 10% after six months, a year, two years, whatever. They're now in the 80%. They're in this section. So now they're not in the bottom 10%, they're in the 80%. And then after a series of time, they're going to be in the top 10%. So now they're not in the top 10% of these people, they're in the top 10% of these people. And they have another choice. They can either stay here and be better than this group of people that they now know, or they can move up again into a different level, and you get the idea, times 5. They can now move into this level and start to move up this way and every single time you get to that stage where you're either in the bottom 10 percent or the top 10 percent you have two two decisions you either stay there or you move up and a lot of people will stay there because this is their world right they don't see anything other than this um because for example if you go to work all of the people at work are earning the same amount that you're earning. They're all in this little box, earning the same amount of money as you. Whereas if you branch out to people, um, for example, my mentor, I was probably down here, 
he was, I'd probably say here. So he was earning six figures. No. Yeah, he was earning six figures, but he was trading seven figures. Um, I was down here and I skipped a lot. So I skipped the kind of five figures. I went straight to the six slash seven figure section. My mentor was here. His mentor was here. I don't want to say his name, but very, very famous in the trading industry. Um, he's not in the trading industry anymore, but yeah. So he's here. He's in that top 10%. Now I don't know much about him, so he might be in a different level, but this, from my perspective down here, this is what I saw. And this mentor that was in the bottom 10% of this um, group of people, I would say probably brought me up to here. Maybe here, but I'd probably say here. Um, and all I'm doing is trying to go up the next level. Keep pushing up these levels um, and never, never being satisfied because you are the best, the richest, the what, whatever, um, in your little kind of group. I guess it's the, it's the same with sports as well. Um, if you want like a sports analogy, you can play for. Uh, Who are we going to pick? <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. Let's pick Burton, okay? Burton Albion. So I was born in Burton, so I'll pick those. It's okay for me to bash them. Um, yeah, so you can be, you can play for Burton, which are like down here, and you can be the best. So you could be the best player at Burton Albion, but you're still not, you know, you're still not in the big leagues, right? You're still down here, but you're the best in, in Burton. Compared to all the other players in your team, you're the best. You can either stay at Burton and be the best, or you could move to, I don't know, Barcelona. I don't know anyone that would go from um, Burton to Barca, but you know, whatever. You move to Barcelona and you're now all the way up here, right? Or here, some would say. You're now in the you're definitely in the bottom ten percent of players. Right? Does this make sense? So you're you're in the bottom ten percent, but you've moved all of these levels and you've pushed yourself out of your comfort zone. So this is the concept of progression, I guess you could say. Um the next thing is thinking 10 to 15 steps ahead so if i go on to gu i'm definitely out of this trade um but it's a good example so for example on this trade you watched me enter it and i put these levels on and every single time so at these specific levels i have things that i'm going to do okay so when we reach level one, I'm going to do something. So I do it. Once we reach level two, I'm going to do something. So I do it. Once we reach level three, I'm going to do it and so on and so on. So I've planned five steps ahead. Now, if you want to think like a grandmaster, you could probably do 10 to 15 steps ahead. It's a little hard with trading, but you get what I'm trying to say. Um, so thinking 10 to 15 steps ahead is going to help you with your overall trading as well because you're not going to be making any uh, rash decisions. The next one is to have a plan and think about it and also to take your time with executing that plan. Um, hold on. Um, I have a plan when I enter a trade, right? And I take my time to think about that plan. When you're playing, I don't know who plays chess in here, but when you're playing chess, if you're not on a timer, you can take quite a long time to think about your next move. Because what you're doing is you're thinking 10 to 15 uh, moves ahead of that move that you're thinking about. And if you don't like it, then you're thinking about a different move 
and then that move 10 to 15 steps ahead of that. And it's the same thing with trading. So G has just broken this high. What are the next five to 10 things G you could do? Map it all out in your trading plan and see, is this something I can trade? Is this a tradable setup for me? If it's not, fine, whatever, move on. If it is, you've mapped that out and you can now act on that. And the next one is being calm and being collected. I'm sure that you'll be able to send me a video of this happening, but how many times do you see a chess player flipping the board, punching something, uh, screaming, shouting, getting emotional? How often do you see that? Almost never. Um, they're all calm, they're all collected, they're all focused, and they just, you know, they just, tr um, not trade, they all um, play their next move and their next 10 to 15 moves that, that they've mapped out in their head. Um, and probably the reason for that is because they understand that you can't make good decisions when you're thinking with emotion. So yeah, that's the kind of video on uh, playing or trading like a grandmaster. Now, what could I have done better with this trade? The reason why I entered right here, or right here, is because of London and because we had this push and then we saw a nice clean three move push up and we were right at that 50 level. Um, now, I could have waited for this candle to close bearish. That would have been a safer option for me. But I was willing to take this risk because I understand that I could have a better payoff due to that. Now, it hasn't worked out, but that's not the point. The point is that I'm reflecting on my trades and thinking how I can improve. And that's exactly what a chess whatever would do. Um, reflect on every single thing that you're doing and try and improve on that.